Welcome back, everyone, to the Lost World Series Week 9. We're into the winner's semifinals, despite what it says at the bottom of the screen. It's semi, not quarter. And we are going to be starting out with FSC and Randy. Immediately. Like, they they already started. We're on Zed. We have Spiders. We have Cloaky. We are... Actually, this is going to be interesting, because neither player is playing a factor that's bound to the... Bound to the main ledges. Though Spider has a bit more mobility going for it. But then Cloakie, of course, has a lot of ways of countering Spider. Mainly the Ronin. I mean, the Ronin is a strong way of countering Spiders, but... Then again, Venoms are really strong right now. And indeed, that is FFC strategy. Venoms. And then more Venoms. And then follow it up with Venoms. Maybe right back, but mostly Venoms. But yeah, this map, like, the, the main path that a spider bot can take is going to be, like, through here or through here. Like, this or this. Because everything else is ramped, so it doesn't really matter. Or maybe, I guess, like, this kind of thing. But, yeah, I don't know. Because, like I said, bots already have a lot of maneuverability on the ramps. Now this player looks to be too keen on taking the center too quickly. FSC being a little more aggressive for it, because the center doesn't really matter in this matchup that much on this map. Again, both players have quite a lot of potential to move around the map and just build, er, and move units around wherever they want to. So everyone's going to have to do a lot of work defending, and that's, that's a lot to deal with. But basically, the center of the map, that flat ground, that often is the point of contention... I don't see that becoming a major point of contention for this game. Maybe in the mid to late game, but definitely not early on. Not before enough turrets have been set up along the along the lines of these ramps. And it's starting. FFC already setting up a Lotus over to the southeast. But again, FFC cares even less. Because again, they can just kind of go along here if they want to. Or along here. Or up here if they wanted to. But they can take whatever path they want. Randy is a little more restricted. And that's exactly what FFC is banking on. Randy, on the other hand, clearly is banking on just having enough glaives up. And then using radar to make sure they know exactly where their opponents are situated. Which is wise. I mean, being that this is a very flat map, or at least has a very flat surface at the top, that makes a lot of sense for how to approach it. So yeah, completely understand that logic. Of course, the question becomes, is Randy going to try to send those glaives down a ramp somewhere? I mean, FFC doesn't have quite as much radar going on. They have their they have their commander, they have their weavers. And again, this map doesn't have a lot of radar shadow. But that's kind of all they have right now. Randy, however, going just straight down the middle. Doesn't even care. Straight down the middle, right through the Venoms. It's a Reaver in back to try to help defend, but that's it with Knights following up. But really, the Glaives just going in. Randy figuring they can just out-micro the Venoms. Don't even care about that splash damage. And it looks like they're right. At great cost, mind you. But the Glaives did manage to... Well, they managed to breach the center, or at least a Glaive managed to breach the center. But I don't know how long it's going to last. FFC... Got the production now really online. Ah, that's a lot of Venoms. Essentially, the entire force has got replaced. And now there's this giant reclaim field that belongs to FFC. Well, that can easily be made to belong to FFC. Definitely FFC is going to try. Though admittedly, the Night Reaver switch from Randy is an effective tool. I mean, the thing is, FFC doesn't have a lot currently set up to deal with that. That being said, these Venoms... Ooh, it's going to come in. It's going to... Uh, Randy's commander should be okay. What did they go for? Ra not much. They have radar. That's not helpful. I mean, they might just see now, like, oh, hey, something's up. So, yeah, something's up. 
Let's come in here. Crab to try to help deal with the heavy units. More Venoms, I suppose, is a kind of backup force. But everything else is just... Randy... I don't deal with that. that. FFC can literally go anywhere they want in this map. Like, it's worth noting. Bots? Oh, no, bots could go take that path, too. Never mind. Not just spiders, but spiders have an easier time taking that path. But yeah, again, the radar doesn't easily spot this. Still, though, they are being spotted. Like, they are being seen, the Venoms. Like, the radar has, the vi has a visual range on them, but again, it doesn't have radar coverage of the valley, and those Venoms can just go do whatever the heck they want. That being said, Randy still has a pretty heavy force up here, and they did manage to get that reclaim field of their glaives. FFC just about finished with that crab. Imp's coming in to try to... Oh, I see, he's trying to defend against Venoms. That might try to go somewhere where they might maybe not be advised to do so. But yeah, again, if we look at Randy's forces, they have no idea that there's Venoms there. Like nothing on radar, although it is going to be it is going to be scouted. And the question is, is if FFC is going to be able to micro in time, and indeed they are, they're aware of that. Spot it, run away. But yeah, very clever use of Radar Shadow. Because really, Golda only has... Unless they make Radar in that bottom section, they have no real way of spotting what's being built there. And now with the Crab... Ah, admittedly, ah, the Reclaim Field's been taken. But still, FSC can at least stop the Reclaim Field from being taken further. And... That provides FFC some degree of breathing room. I'm not sure what more FSC has right now. I mean, again, they've been going Mass Venom. Switching over to Recluse. Kind of makes sense as we are starting to get into that mid-game center push play. And that is going to be a concern. So with that, FFC should be able to hold the center. I mean, a little cloaked force around here. Ooh. Okay, this is this is a lot actually. Randy Randy moving out with a cloaked force. Unfortunately, I don't want to control move them. Keep them all matching speed. Yeah, Randy moving in with the cloaked force, trying to keep Trying to keep it hidden. I think Oh, it's being spotted though. FFC can totally see it coming. That one warrior that fell out of formation got out of the Area Cloak. Yeah, FFC knows there's there's nothing stopping them. They can just get rid of this Conjurer. They can they can push the center from the sides. Have to worry about the assault coming here, but they knew already that they got they had a lot of room to maneuver around here. Still, it comes it comes down to whether or not FFC is able to defend against this. Four Venoms is not a whole lot. I mean, it's doing some damage, but it can't really get too close to the knights or else it's kind of done. Ooh, clever though. Proxy radar coming around the back. So Randy gets full information about what's going on in FFC's base. FFC at the same time is taking out the center. Does. Ooh. Gets through a few frontline units coming in here and continues to push that center as well. Of course, they're. Their base is under threat. I mean, more and more Venoms are being built up, and so it's not like it's under super heavy threat. But those Venoms have got to be careful. Randy's commander as well coming to the front lines. Not too concerned. It'll, it won't die unless it gets really careless. But no, it should be fine. But it is, however, the only thing building any kind of defenses up at the front lines, which that crab is making short work of. Still, though, unfortunately, having to pull these Venoms back to get rid of the Knights does reduce the amount of units on the front lines. However, the Knights have gone down, and that it should be like a few hundred metal reclaims. 600? It'll be about a thousand by the time it's all said and done. So 750 metal reclaim. I mean, that's, that's a good minute and a half, or maybe 50 seconds. Like, 
good 40 seconds with both of these weavers building that or using that up. Randy, however, does have the caretaker set up despite everything. The crab has gone down. FFC struggling to hold the center. Although if they do manage to nail that commander, it won't be too hard to push back. Not to mention, the frontline forces are basically gone. Venoms. Oh, how much do they know? How much do they know? They know enough, I think. Venom should be able to come in without too much trouble. That stinger is going to be a threat, but ultimately those Venoms... All I have to worry about is that one night. Same time, Firewalker's being set up as well to provide covering fire against all of these hammers. Or all these slings, rather. <laughs> well, that's an old term. All these slings. And curiously, Randy, what they're planning on doing here? I mean, okay, yes, obviously setting up some static defenses over in the corner, but not in a great position to build out from unless maybe you're trying to go for some kind of... I don't know, something... Some kind of proxy factory or something? I don't know. Same time, nice nice use of terraform here from FFC just to protect the... Protect all that. And the Firewalker coming in. Helping a little bit of support. Not really obviously what it was meant for. It was meant to get rid of the slings. But still, extra bit of damage does help out the Venoms. Knights being out of position as well also helps the Venoms. One more Venom coming in here should be enough to clean out the Knight. Oh no, the Knight Reaver. That Knight Reaver combo is making it just too difficult to work with. However, the Fireworkers have come in. They are taking out the Slings. They are taking out the Caretakers. And that is opening things up. Yeah, multiple Firewalkers, just not going to be fun here. Randy, however, their commander is still in a well-defended position. They're still pushing hard, and actually... Okay, now I see where these are for. Taking this eastern expansion here. Providing Randy a nice little... Like, now it's this big circle that they have. It's going to be difficult for FSC to try to pull in on that. I think said, FFC's Venom mobility is still doing them a lot of favors. But unfortunately, that's kind of all they have going for them. Venom's coming along the side, looking to get rid of all these Lotuses. Risky proposition, though admittedly the Recklesses are a nice backup. Unless the Venoms are there, just I think the Venoms might just be there in case more cloaked units exist. But it looks like there's some confidence that there are no further cloaked units. So that does look to be it. Randy not quite able to save their caretakers. At least one of them. The second one is still alive. Though it is now on fire. Same time, Recklesses, Venoms, able to get rid of everything Randy built up in the southeast. Same time, managing to hold out the center again. However, Randy with the Phantom. Actually, is that going to do much good? There's not a whole lot of high-value targets hit with the Phantom. Really, it's just massive Venom. I mean, thinning up the numbers is not bad. But the Firewalkers are so far behind, the Phantom It's the only thing you could really hit. But the Firewalkers are far behind. The Slings have been just torched to death. This entire center area is basically just one Stinger. And really, with all these Venoms, that's not a huge threat. Honestly, I think the biggest threat Randy has going for them right now is that FFC isn't doesn't have radar coverage. They don't know what Randy actually has. That's the biggest threat. If Randy had a Weaver... I guess, actually, this Weaver is not high ground, honestly. Which, in fact, is how they got radar coverage they have now. But, yeah. That's the thing. They just don't know what Randy has. And that's leading them to be very... Ca like, overly cautious. They could be pushing forward with what they have. And do enough damage to take out Randy's forces. But... FFC has no idea. I have no idea Randy's basically defending entirely with two phantoms. Like, two phantoms and confidence. That's it. Although, Singer Town, that... Okay, this... Is this going to be the Q? Looks very... Yeah, that that's the Q. Or maybe not. Again, FSC is very, very skittish about this. They should have an armor value. Yeah, they have it. 
They have a significant army value advantage. They have 4, 4,500 metal advantage of army value. They can push this. Easily. The Ravens are a bit of a threat, but not, not a significant one. I mean, they're going to be stunned out if they try to approach the Venoms. Uh, case in point, yeah. Or it would have been if it weren't for the Knights distracting them, but very soon be case in point. There it is. That that Raven simply doesn't get anything going. And there's the push. FFC managing to grind down Randy's defenses. And Randy doesn't have a whole lot to show for it right now. Looking at the main base, they are setting up for Lico. They're setting up for Phantom. Not a whole lot of mass damage, though. Not a lot of Reavers. Some Knights. Do have Imps, though. Imps would be a threat. But I think FFC is just more concerned about stabilizing with what they have. Getting the reclaim, turning the economic advantage, getting an overwhelming army, and then building up from there. Oh, and building up Advanced Radar! The one thing that changed this patch. Advanced Radar got cheaper and stronger. And on a map like this, it's actually going to be extremely effective, because other than this one bit of terraform, nothing is going to block that radar. So if we look as the Advanced Radar is finished, we'll see... Radar coverage massively increased. This area is this gap being the one section because of the radar shadow off of that. That is the one bit of radar shadow that matters, but it's not really all that much. So yeah, FSC is full knowledge what Randy's up to. Which is going to be invaluable. So yeah, I mean Randy went or FSC went from not building any radar to basically building all of the radar all at once. And now they know exactly what's going on. Unfortunately, they also have to contend with Lico's. And Tarantulas are not on the way. Randy continuing to go for more and more Phantoms. Again, the goal is to get rid of the Firewalkers. One of which has apparently already fallen. I mean, replacements are forthcoming, but it's still unfortunate. That's a lot. Ooh, but an Imp gets taken out. Nice shot at the Firewalker. Gets rid of that imp. Bit of a lucky shot, but it worked out. Stunned out one of the phantoms, leaving it wide open. And that is a dead phantom. That's 750 metal. And granted, at great cost again. I mean, those Lico's, those Lico's are really providing a lot of support for Randy. That's really what's been holding him in this game right now. I mean, honestly, if a few tarantulas came up, took out the Lico's, or Razors or chainsaws or an Artemis. I don't know. Something that gets rid of it. Not really Artemis. That would be way too expensive. But if something got rid of the Lico, I think that'd be it for FC. And even then, Randy's commander forced to jump away. Being a little bit careless there. And again, more fire. More of yield phantoms. Both phantoms have been revealed. Or two of the three. Rather, there's one left. Lico coming in as well. Gets rid of a couple of the recluses. But again, FFC is running a massive economic advantage. Army value-wise, though, it's evening out. That Lico is really paying for itself. Actually, no. Subtract 2,000. Yeah, ground, ground army, it's still FFC with a factor of 2 advantage. And a lot of it is things like this Phantom. Which, unfortunately, are about to get rid of the Weaver. Or what? But it's been spotted. Oh, but we are seeing... Okay, air switch into Cloakbot Factory. So we're looking at Swifts to get rid of the Lico. Cloakbots for... Probably Glaives to try to hunt down the Phantoms, if I had to guess. Fleas. I suppose being seen as too frail of an option. So I'm thinking, why not make a, why not make another plate for spiders and just spam fleas? Hmm. At any rate... FFC has a much has a fairly solid grasp on the center, but of course that's it's not pushing. But then the Swifts are here. The Lico is not Lico having to be repaired. Ah, okay, there it goes. Lico coming out. The Swifts are ready. FFC knows it. Randy does know it as well. And the Lico goes down. Dead Lico. And just to prove my point regarding the army value, it should oh well. We'll see in a sec. Next, next tick update. Oh no, FC actually losing quite a few. 
Despite everything. Very strange. Well, at any rate, Randy's actually able to pull this back despite losing their Lico. Oh, right, yeah, FMC did, they focused way too much on anti-air. The tarantulas were totally unnecessary. Like, the Swifts were more than enough, just... Ah, uh, they should they shouldn't have gone with tarantulas. I think that's gonna just ruin the match for them. They got way too focused on the possibility of more and more Lycos. Or just more air to worry about, and now they've lost the center again. Like, honestly, the tarantulas here... Not worth it. It's a shame, too, because that, like, Ran FSC had a massive advantage going in, but now Randy's taking that advantage back. They've taken the center, they've taken the reclaim. They haven't even taken the reclaim yet. They're taking a bit of it, but not anywhere near the entire field. And all the forces that FSC had built up, falling down, Phantom's taking them out slowly but surely, and the Venom's still not going in, despite, despite knowing that there was very much free reign, but then the Lico... The Lico did do its job. It took out everything it needed to. And again, tarantulas, that's 1,600 metal and tarantulas. Why? Actually, it was 2,400 metal and tarantulas when you can count the ones that have died. I mean, in Venoms, that's that's 12 Venoms. 12 Venoms would take this. No problem 12 Venoms would take this. And the Swifts were more than enough of a threat to stop the Ligos. Seeing a tank switch from Randy, though, going into Emissary... Which kind of makes sense as a way of just breaking through that center. Should point out, there's not a whole lot of defenses along the sides. I mean, there's some, but in either case, I don't think it's enough for decent armor to get in if either player had a significant advantage, held the center well. Going around the side would have been an option for FFC. It is now an option for Randy. I mean, there's a couple of pickets. That's about it. Half a dozen glaze would be able to take tear through that. Still, though, again, that tarantula's all albatross around FFC's neck. I mean, I guess it does mean we aren't going to see any more switches into more Lecos, but again, it's... It's just the amount of money we're seeing is turning into Randy being able to just overwhelm ground forces. There's the fleas, though, coming in, trying to get rid of the phantoms. Unfortunately, not having much luck doing so. It's honestly, now is not the time. Five minutes ago was the time. Now it's too late. There just isn't room for that. Swiss trying to come in. Bossly, that's just trying to compensate for the cost. Might get rid of one knight, though. Doesn't back get rid of a knight. Looks like get rid of possibly another knight. Will not get rid of the ogre. Will, in fact, be completely destroyed by the ogre. And with that now, there's no reason not to build another Lico, which is exactly what Randy is thinking. Yeah, FFC desperately trying to defend, but just loses the last hope they had as Randy pours into the base. I mean, FFC had this game. They honestly had this game. They... The Lico tore, tore a lot of those hopes to shreds, but even then, I think if they had pushed in at that point, realizing, well, wait a sec, my opponent has spent all this money on Lico. I have the advantage, and I can just rush in. The Phantoms can't outrun me and can't really out-kill me. Especially when you had fleas available that you could use to scout out snipers. I don't know. I feel like a lot of it was just FFC either forgetting units they had or being afraid of using certain units, thinking that they'll just die and so not bothering to try. But at the middle of the map, or middle of the game, yeah, fleas coming in there, scouting at the Phantoms. The Firewalker was doing a good job, too. Just send the, send the Venoms forward. But again, that lack of radar really stuffed them. Like, just not knowing what was going on up until they made the advanced radar. Really ruined a lot of their chances to take advantage of their larger army. And just take advantage of the advantageous situation that they had. So Randy takes it, moves on to the winner's finals to fight Gota. Unsurprisingly, Gota having beaten Pudis in the other winner's finals, which... Clearly didn't take as much time. So, yeah, we're gonna have... Although, I will admit, this is actually a pretty okay match on Zed. I mean, that match is a reason I don't like Zed, because, again, it just was center back and forth, but it wasn't the worst center back and forth. It was just kind of frustrating, because FFC just had a much stronger position than they realized. But yeah, so we're going to be moving on to the winner's finals of Gota and Randy.
which has been the winners finals pretty much every week for the last few weeks ever since Golda started playing which I think was week three so where is it okay all right Golda versus Randy I believe I don't know if they started the map bands yet I doubt it Oh, ooh, Frog's here. We have a Google Frog. Hey. Hello. How's it going? I'm okay. Yeah, it's good. I'm doing all right. That last game was a little frustrating to watch because it was a snatch to beat from Jaws of Victory sign of situation, but that was... I'm doing all right overall, though. That's good. I can't find the bracket at all. Oh, it's on the... Get you the link. No. Yeah, so we're dealing with the... Winner's Finals. It is Gulda and Randy. And they are on to map bans. Banning Zed, thank God. Okay, we don't have to worry about Zed in this in the winners' finals. Might have to worry about it in the grand finals, but I kinda doubt it. Not sure why FFC chose that, but well, there you go. Anyway. So it's Zed's a out. Really small map. There's not much flanking. Nope. Might have to do it against some opponents. Nope, it is it is a grindy map. Did you watch the last game? Yes. Yeah, so you, you saw. I mean, you already know it's a grindy map, but you saw how, how grindy it happened to be in that particular match. Yeah. A bit back and forth, though, with the the spiders pushing in. Well, the spiders being stopped by the, the stinger, then pushing in. Mm -hmm. And the phantoms coming back with the village show, which really did work. It got to level three, so it made three times its cost. Yeah, that 6,000. Not even that. counting all the anti air it. Um, Forced. Yeah, when you count the anti-air, it's closer to. Well, I say the Swiss were worthwhile, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that, but 7,200 easily. Yeah, four times easily. Like the not 7,200, 8,400. Yeah, just counting tarantulas. The the Swifts were fine. The Swifts. I'm not gonna count those because those factory and Swifts together, I think, amounted to like 1,500. But that was also that killed the Lico. It certainly did work. Yeah, I think that that. Really gave Randy the game back. Just for what it was able to pull off. If they even weren't for that, there would have just been Venoms pushing in, getting rid of the Phantoms, and then hitting the main base and killing it. Yes. Well, anyway, Zed's out, Scaryland's out, Sapphire Shores are out, which I don't expect to ever see. Because they're a big map. That's really slow. And which people don't really play on. Yeah, it's not that Sapphire Shores is a C map. It's mm -hmm. more like Sapphire Shores is a team game map where there's understandably a bunch of metal in the back. And the fact that there's a C and then there's a cliff. Oh, there's no C. This is dry. That... This is Sapphire Shores dry. Oh, this is the dry version? Okay. Yep. Yeah, apparently there was some issues with the infrastructure on the wet version. I guess it hasn't been supported for a while, so... It was easier just to use the dry version. I mean, for what it's worth, yep. I don't know if any of the maps have been or any games have been played on Sapphire Shores. But yeah. even so, <laughs> it's there's quite the economy on it. You'd expect people to sort of build up, given it's semi-thin. Yeah. Well, we're on Anvilwood. Reclaim City. Yeah. So I guess considering Vantage and Sparkles as the alternatives, I can kind of see it. Anvilwood feels like the map for plans. It's got pretty, not straightforward plans, but they're compartmentable. You can compartmentalize your plans into reclaim this way and metal the other way. Hmm, I see. And you can be fairly sure you can just walk a commander along the ridge and get the metal. 
So then the fight could be about the reclaim, or the fight could be what do you do after everyone sort of taken the safe metal. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Cloaking on Spider and Randy mealing over Double Weaver. One conjure for Golda. I I like how Randy's doing this. I mean it's it's a little risky, but honestly, two weavers, 15 metal per second, reclaim. Or actually one at home, one in like 7.5 in the field, 7.5 at home. Rapidly speed up the factory production. That would be my guess anyway. Looks like the commander's going out to do the reclaim very rapidly, which is quite nice. Yep. I'm just thinking the commander plus weaver, that's 17 and a half, and then factory plus weaver for using the build power is 17 and a half. So you can just actually you need a caretaker on top of that. Well still. Although I know Randy well, was Randy saying not even using his factory. Well no, Randy was saying, I know it's in the forum thread for the patch notes, they were thinking that with the change from 300 to 300 to 250 as the starting metal and energy, that it's worth just leaving the factory idle. Which I can kind of see, though I think low priority is fine. Uh, yeah, 10 or so seconds of idle sounds like it could be okay. Although, this is the greediest you could be. Mm -hmm. Commander out the front getting radar. Very closed in map. And Venom is quite defensive. Yeah, just in time, Venom. But well played. That's the perfect efficient Venom. Yeah. Doesn't actually get the kill though, because it is slow. Unless okay. No, it's it's nothing it's not gonna make a difference. But still Randy's able to get that reclaim. Golda, however, working on the reclaim as well. It's another player really showing a significant advantage at this point. So Goda wants to do something early, which is the kind of thing you want to do if you're making mm. cloak box here. But I'm not so sure it works. Well, I like the use of the Ronin. I mean, that will deal with the Venom pretty handily. And Gorda... Or, Gorda's just going to be running into Venom. I mean, Randy clearly going with Venoms are strong. I'm going to go Venom, unless I have to do otherwise. I think the he's saying Constructors are strong. I'm going to defend with Venom until it's time to attack. Because making oh. all this glaive, you're sort of claiming that something can happen on this map early on. Aggressive. Well, it looks like the thing that might be happening is Ronin on Randy's commander. Randy's commander should be jumping away from that pretty quickly, though. No, it's jumping. Randy Hello. going in. Randy going ham. Well, that's... He's got Venoms coming up. They do. It's not the riskiest strategy, but it's still... That, that was still kind of scary. I mean, I don't think... They, they called it. I mean, Gorda didn't have enough units in reserve to actually deal with the commander coming at them. But still. Randy's commander, however, is continuing to be hyper-aggressive. Has the Venom back up, just in case. Though a solid couple imps would ruin his day. I don't expect Gorda to build any imps, but they would ruin his day. In the meantime, though, Randy has continued to expand a bit faster than Golda. Not quite what I expected, in fact. So you Although, expected two weavers, though. Yeah, I expected the weavers to be going out to reclaim, but no, one, they're just going to build quickly, and Randy wiping out all the glaives coming at their commander. That's what that ven that's what the Venom backup was for. And it worked. Lost some health on it, though. But if the commander can just walk back and reclaim... Oh, yeah, the commander's fine. ...even stop things. The commander is not really under any major threat. Yeah, they're sort of playing a game of fight armies in the middle. God A is forcing fights to happen, but the fights aren't really about all that much. They are about health on the commander and whether the commander gets to sit idle and reclaim for a bit. Well, it's certainly working. I mean, God has managed to take a little more territory as far as the final reclaim field goes. And it's putting Randy's commander in an awkward position where it's going to be forced to jump away. That provides even more reclaim for Gorda's commander. Though the Venoms coming in, swarming back, are a pretty big threat. Venom isn't that great against Ronan, though. It's not. They don't quite have the speed. That's true. But any of them caught out of position are dead. Away. 
Yeah, you can ward them away, but otherwise. Well, can you jump into that hole? Yeah, that's... Oh, well, no, no, no they're not, if they're not close enough. And they're not going for it. The Venoms over do catch out a bunch of the Ronin. The Glaives could come in now. They no, could. Venoms are in position, but the Ronin able to come in, get those last few hits in, and that is Randy's commander down. Gota forced something and made it work. Venom's coming in on revenge. And it looks like there's an attempt to kite this, but the Venoms might just be too fast. I mean, the kiting will work fine, but the Venoms won't be killed in time. Well, most of Randy's Venoms went into Gota's base. They All of them did at this point, except for like three or four. That's Gota's why base. The was so open. Yeah, so that commander was honestly. It was nice, but it's not enough. Not if these. Not if the Venoms can get the real real value picks in here. Ronin are in, however. They don't have a great position to fight the Venoms from over. The Venoms, unfortunately, a little bit into an open position right now. They're a bit closer to the factories that have a bit more of a chance of skirting around the Ronin, but they are not. Yeah, and that, it's been fought off. Oh, I think if the, Ven the Venoms should not have moved units. away. Were they on fight move or something? No, they were just on attack on straight move. Ah, uh, those Venoms are close yeah, to the, the buildings. Yeah, the Venoms away. They were, and I think that was a mistake. If the Venoms were closer to the buildings, they could have used that as cover around the Ronin, allowing them to stay in range of the Ronin, and then totally wreck face. Uh, I'm not sure if they beat, but Ronin become better at short range against this kind of unit. Yeah, but the Venoms can If you're stun. already at short range, then but Venom, four, Ronin... But four Venoms? They'd stun out all the Ronin. Like, the Ronin wouldn't be able to shoot in the first place. On top of being able to stun out the factories and possibly destroy them. I think you have to kill all the units to even start working on the factories. True, Venom true. has very but, low actual damage. True, but even then, the units, it splash damage on stun. The Ronin would have had a very difficult time in that clumped up space. Regardless, yes, that's was, a... Eh. There was like a Hail Mary play where you try and stun everything perfectly. Yeah. And considering that Randy was playing, was making that entire push a Hail Mary play, I'm a bit surprised they didn't go all in on that. I mean, they are trying to get some sort of momentum back on their side. But honestly, I feel like they're throwing away units. Granted, they do have an economic advantage, so it might not be so bad. Reclaim yeah, off the commander. The bottom. Yeah, small mechs at the bottom. They have the reclaim off the they commander. They have. They have Venoms against Glaives, which is pretty good. Yep, and forcing the Glaives into Lotuses and Faraday's. So that's and something. And they've gone into Recluse, which is pretty spooky on a large open part of the map. Because they're very flankable. Yeah, that's where the Redback comes in. Looks like just straight yeah, Redback so Recluse. transitioning yeah. into a slower mid gamey type army that can deal with a Ronin. Now, given that though, what is the army value looking like? Because Gota has been relatively even economically. They lost a bit on attrition. Eh, a little behind. It's a few hundred metal behind. Gota, that is. Gota's a slight disadvantage. Mostly though, just the one Venom just forcing these Ronin one event, I'm just dancing. That's just dancing. Doesn't even care. Keeping the run and distracted. At any rate, with the recluses in. Now it comes down to what the glaives can do, and the glaives look to be trying to counter it. Oof. Not enough glaives to try that. Although, these rodent could overwhelm these spiders just on their own. Yeah, the redback is uh, down as a there's... result. Slightly too many. Pushing into Randy's base would be quite hard now because his slow army will be reinforced from there. Yeah, honestly, I'm not sure if... I'm trying to think if Clickbot has any major tools that would actually work with this other than... I guess they could do, like, Worker Cloaked Imp? Or some other kind of cloaky tech? Alright, Cloaked, cloaked yeah. Rear Push or something like that? Like, just use the area or cloak on... potentially a Scythe or two could yeah. easily make a cost against those Recluse. Yeah, because the main problem is getting in range, and I think if you had, if you had either, like I said, Scythes or Conjure Cloaked Army, you probably have a decent chance of getting in. Oh, he's going to Slings? 
put down okay. some grind it out some fire on the recluse. Phantom is also pretending to go to work. Although you don't really want to slow a slower a counter which is slower in this army because that's an open area. You'd like to keep the speed advantage. Of course, as the problem of course is that if your counter is too slow, you'll be overwhelmed. Let's go. Oh, what is yeah. bum rush the counter? <laughs> we do on the south. Trying to get the commander at some point, I assume. Probably. Oh. Also, Widow is 280. Sorry, that was... Uh, let's not get into that. That was, that was a discussion about what Widow should be. Uh, yeah, so did we all. But, nope, it's 280. Anyhow. There's the bum rush on the recluses. Not... I'm not sure it was so bad. The Venoms are pulling it off, though. Actually, the Venoms are pulling it off very well. Though. Yeah, unfortunately, the Ronin simply could not fend off the Venom in time. Giving that Widow a bit more room to move. Oh! That Reckless shot in the Ronin, cleaning them up. Flavors along the side trying to help, but honestly, that's just leaving the slings open. You could easily see the Venoms try to rush the slings. Very little can actually catch the sling, though. That's Not the true. commander's out of position by itself. There's the, there's the widow. Well, there's the widow. There's the counter force. But there's such an assault force on this. Golda's commander. Nope, they're they're done. There's no way to counter the assault force before the commander dies. Golda losing their commander, losing their storage. Back to now to an economic disadvantage. Randy should be able to reclaim that. Actually, they got weavers all in position for it. So that is, and Golda's forced oh, back. There's there the slings. The slings. Yep, there they are, being rushed, being pushed against a wall, and being torn to pieces. Randy. I think for the first time in this tournament, we'll be able to... No, not the first time. Goda's, Goda's been losing sides before. I think second or third time in this tournament, we'll be going to the Grand Finals in the winner's side. Unless something rapidly changes in the next couple of minutes. But no, Goda throws in the towel. That is GG. And that is the winner's finals. Randy moving on to Grands. Which are a very interesting back and forth. Yeah. Gotta be trying to use the mobility early. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to cash out the mobility in actual economic damage with these mechs along the ridges. You need more of a a bit of a late game army than you'd think. Yeah. For the economy you can find here. Just because you have time to build up. You have time to build up. You have the reclaim that allows you to really power through the early game construction phase you have the wide open field that makes it really hard to stop anything without having riots but it also makes it's easier to hold space with riots because any raiders don't really have cover to work with yes maybe we need to push forward and put some turrets down in the middle yeah and then they're not defending anything concrete Killing that commander cost quite a bit. Cost him his army advantage and put a lot of reclaim on the around his side. Yeah, so unfor yeah, unfortunately, you mean Randy's commander death? Yes. When Goddard yeah. killed Randy's commander. Yeah, because the, the position was definitely advantageous for Randy. But yeah, so that is going to be it for that. So we're moving on to a short break, and then we'll be back with the loser side of the bracket. So stay tuned. <laughs> 